Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Off the Clock. I'm your host, Sierra Jones. Today we have owner Ms. Mario Parker and her staff of Tennessee Valley Prep Sports Academy. We're going to be hearing from her and how she got started with Tennessee Valley Prep and her staff and what to expect this upcoming season. Off the Clock starts now. Welcome, I am here with Ms. Mariel Parker, owner and executive director of Tennessee Valley Prep Sports Academy. Now, Ms. Parker, if you had five words to describe yourself, what would they be? Christian, persevering, um, ambitious, okay. loving, and big-hearted. And I know that was two words, but it's okay. I have a big heart. <laughs> so how has your personality, especially being big-hearted and loving, how has that transformed to building Tennessee Valley Prep Sports Academy? It allows me to have a passion about what we're doing. Um, it gives me the opportunity to see a bigger vision in terms mm -hmm. of why we're here um, and, and why we are serving the community. Um, of course, when the students are with us, it gives me the opportunity to nurture them as if they yeah. were my own. Um, every student that comes through our program, I literally treat them like they are my own child. Yeah. So I do that so that the parents know that they are in good hands with us. And for those watching right now who have never heard of Tennessee Valley Prep, Will you share what is Tennessee Valley Prep and who is Tennessee Valley Prep? Absolutely. So Tennessee Valley Prep is a second opportunity for students that did not get the opportunity to be recruited by different colleges and different sports um, after graduating high school. Okay. A lot of the students come to us because they were not NCAA qualified academically uh, to play collegiate sports. So they come here, they take care of their classes at Calhoun. We partner okay. with Calhoun Community College. They provide the academic component for them. Um, and so that gives an opportunity to not worry about being academically eligible once they leave us. Mm -hmm. And then we also now with the transfer portal and um, NIL or whatnot, we, we're dealing with students that are overlooked now. Mm -hmm. um, we have those elite student athletes that are now coming to us for that opportunity um, to get another shot at the next level. Yeah. And how did you, how did this come about? Did you wake up one day and say, I want to start a sports academy? How did that happen? My son, um, I tell everybody this story how um, I have four students, four children, and they were all, they were all athletes mm -hmm. in high school. That one, my oldest son, Tyler, he decided to wait till his senior year to play football. Mm -hmm. um, he had the body, the size, you know how coaches, they come in and like, oh man, he has the look but he didn't have the skill set. Mm -hmm. And so we knew nothing about prep programs. And so um, we were um, informed about a prep program that at that time was in Calera, Alabama. Um, he went there, tried out, made the uh, team, was so after that he was in the program. Stayed there for one uh, semester. And after being there for only one semester, he was able to be recruited to Bacon College in Oklahoma. And so um, when I got the opportunity to see what they were able to do for him, I wanted to provide that opportunity for students here in our area. Um, we didn't have anything like that here. I think at that time there may have been one other program in the state. And so I just wanted to go ahead and provide that opportunity to the students here. So we did the uh, groundwork 2017, 2018, we got off the ground. Thus, here we are now 2024 with Tennessee Valley Prep. Wow, that is absolute blessing. So this is beginning year six or year five? Six year, six. seventh season. Wow, mm -hmm. that's absolutely incredible. So those watching right now, even maybe there's some high school students watching right now, how do they get in contact with you guys? How do they become a part of Tennessee Valley Prep? So our coaches are recruiting every day for football and basketball. So if we have a student that's interested in the program, um, they can reach out to any of our staff. They can reach yeah. out to me. I do some recruiting as well. <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's weird for me to be on the recruiting side, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, but they reach out to any of our coaching staff or they can also apply on our website at tvalleyprep.com. Okay. Um, we get a lot, a lot of applicants on that site. And so any student that wants to come to our program, they can reach out to a staff member or visit our website and apply there. There. That is awesome. And is, is there a limit? Like, do you have a cutoff number or? In the beginning, we didn't. Okay. And that was kind of um, not such a good idea. And reason being, every student that comes here, they have to have good film yeah. leaving us. Good film looks like 
they're getting good reps on the court when it comes mm -hmm. to basketball or football. They're getting the opportunity to go in and out to make different plays and stuff. We call that quality film. And so in order to do so, every student has to play. And so um, our first season, we had 120 students on the roster for football. Wow. So imagine what that looked like with trying to get students yeah. in and out in terms of, you know, going in and out to play. But then it also interfered with the momentum of the game. So now we won't take more than 50 to 60 students on the roster for football okay. and no more than 12 for basketball. Okay. And we now have t uh, two teams for basketball um, because we have so many students that reach out and apply to the program. Um, it got to a point where we were constantly turning students away. Mm. So this year we decided to implement a second team. So we're now able to bring 24 on the roster for basketball. That is a blessing. Yes. Now also, will you talk to those watching too, will you talk more about also the fundraising aspect of it? Because unless you're part of a different, you know, um, just people around businesses, but how do you receive funding for your program? So I'll be totally honest, a lot of the funding comes from me. Wow. Um, we do have students that pay into the program. We have fees. Um, that's where it goes into the big heart of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've told over and over and over again that I have a bleeding heart. Um, we don't make it necessarily about the fees. Um, okay. Of course, you know, we encourage students to you know, try to pay their fees because that help covers the athletic part of things. Mm -hmm. But a student is never turned away because they can't pay their fees. And so I keep my day job. Yeah. <laughs> um, I work for the government that helps pay the bills and stuff. Right. Um, but we're always reaching out for people who are considered enough to give donations and stuff. Um, each team will do a team bonding trip. Okay. And so we reach out to people for donations for that. And the students will kind of help fundraise um, in that aspect. But really, uh, myself, my parents have been very good with... Um, um, providing sponsorships for students. Um, the coaches themselves give so much of their time and resources and stuff mm -hmm. to the students. Um, you guys will get a chance to talk with our uh, coaches. Mm -hmm. My football coach will tell you he feeds the kids every Tuesday. Wow. So it's just different in acts of in-kind and stuff in terms mm -hmm. of donations or whatnot that help uh, fund the program and keep it going. And if someone right now is watching and wants to donate, what is what are the needs that you have and what are the best ways to donate? Oh, the best way to donate is on our website. We do have yeah. the option for them to do that, or they can reach out to myself or a coach. Um, we're always in need of equipment, um, in particular helmets and stuff. We get our helmets reconditioned every two years. So we're cycling out helmets and stuff okay. that can no longer be reconditioned. Um, we just got a big uh, donation for uniforms. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so I can't wait to make that announcement. It's stuff a local uh, college student. Um, he played at a local high school here. He has reached out and decided to donate uh, uniforms for our football team this year. We um, haven't had new uniforms since we started. Wow. And um, they've been wearing those same uniforms since 2018. Um, basketball uniforms, balls, um, just different equipment that different equipment that we would utilize for practice or gameplay. Yeah, I want to go back to when you one of the words you describe yourself was persevering. Mm -hmm. Will you talk about how you persevered with Tennessee Valley Prep? Absolutely. So. This vision came into place in 2015. That's when Tyler, my oldest son, decided to attend a prep program. And so it was one of those things where I want to do this. I didn't know where to begin. Yeah. And then being you know, a female doing this, mm -hmm. it was unheard of. And so just all the different um, naysayers in terms of she's a woman. She doesn't know what she's doing. It'll never happen. Yeah. I kind of start thinking that way. But then I was raised by parents who taught me to fight for what I wanted, mm -hmm. you know, never to stop, be a go-getter. So, and I've always been, I've always had that go-getter personality. But in a world that was made for men, it was mm -hmm. tough for me. And so um, the support of my dad, the support of my mom, my, my children, uh, we have people on the outside that have been really big supporters and stuff. They gave me that strength to muster that per perseverance, to continue to strive for what it was that I wanted to do for this community. And yeah. so it's been tough. A lot of doors were shut in my face initially. Mm -hmm. um, 2018, uh, 2019, you know, she's not going to be here. I had teams that wouldn't play me. Mm -hmm. in 2018 because they felt like I was a new program. She wouldn't be around 2019. 2019 came and went. 2020, we dealt with COVID. Mm -hmm. We were the only team. It, it was at that time six teams in our conference. Myself and two other teams, we made wow. it through COVID. And so I found myself on the end of she'll never make it to now I'm conference president. I'm mm -hmm. serving. I, this is my fourth time serving as the president of a conference um, with um, teams that are all men. I'm the only female in that. Wow. 
Yeah. And so it's been prayer, you know, God, my church family, um, our minister here serves as our, serves as our team chaplain. So just the, the support of the community and stuff has yeah. allowed me the opportunity to keep going. And that perseverance has, you know, it's opening doors. We, mm -hmm. you know, have another opportunity that's coming our way as well. So that's allowed me to get through a lot of different things that we've experienced here, but also given us the opportunity to to, to fly in terms of the program, to that expand. That is incredible. You, you, you answered my last question. It was going to be just advice, <laughs> and you said it, persevere. Um, thank you. She mentioned her dad, and we're going to get him on next to hear just about what he does with you in this program. We'll be right back. Hello Huntsville is a weekly lifestyle audio and video podcast produced in studio and on location to showcase Huntsville's best activities, entertainment, neighborhoods, and all the unique attractions that make the Rocket City one of the top cities to live in the nation. Our primary audience is adults who live, work, play, and innovate in the Huntsville metro area. And each episode will feature Cynthia or Hannah in conversation with business owners, decision makers, elected officials, and some of the city's most compelling personalities telling the stories of their hometown. Whether you're local, new in town, or just passing through, Hello Huntsville will have something for you. Welcome back. I am here with Ms. Mariel Parker, the owner and executive director of Tennessee Valley Prep Sports Academy, and her dad, Coach Paul Parker, who is the athletic director for Tennessee Valley Prep. So look, Coach, I got to ask, you have a couple rings over there. Will you tell us about those rings? All righty, young lady. I'd be more than glad to. <laughs> here is a uh, state title with Athens City School. 2006, we won the state title. Okay. Um, uh, beat you follow. And this in here is, of course, my daughter. She won a, a, a national championship ring, national, yeah. you know, beach, and, and, and I'm just proud to wear her ring, too. <laughs> but I have another one that I misplaced from Abilene Christian University back in 1973. Oh, wow. Uh, we were the national champs. Congratulations I that. played with Will Montgomery for the Eagles, Johnny Perkin, New York Giants, Clint Lonely, Dallas Cowboy. They all turned pro. Of course, I got hurt, but nevertheless, it was great. Wow. Yeah. So look, when you got a call from your daughter telling you that she wanted to start Tennessee Valley Prep, what was your reaction? You know, I saw the hesitant, but I know Muriel, she, she's outgoing and she's going to do what Muriel want to do. I always <laughs> wanted to go to law school because she talks a lot, but she chose <laughs> to do this and I'm proud of her and she, 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 has, done, she has done well. Yeah, she's doing I'm so really proud well. Of her. Yeah, six yeah. years. Yeah, six years. So how is it working with your dad? It's awesome. I'll be honest. He, my dad's a disciplinarian, mm -hmm. so I, I stayed in trouble growing up. But <laughs> he pushed me, him and my mom, all yes. the morals and stuff that they instilled in us. Um, yes. His love for God, um, he's, mm -hmm. he's a strong Christian, and his love for God has given me the willpower to seek him first in everything that I do. So mm -hmm. it's been amazing. He he brings that component to Tennessee Valley Prep. Um, he does a lot in terms of behind the scene things mm. that a lot of people are unaware that a lot of people are unaware of that he does and, and whatnot. It's been just amazing having him on board with us. That's incredible. And so do you deal with sometimes with scheduling? Do you guys work on that together or is that? So the coaches make their own schedules. Okay. Um, so we, we don't get involved with that. So he's more with game day operations, mm -hmm. practice operations, and, um, and then anything that, you know, needs to be done from a coach's perspective and stuff. Now, Coach, if I go out to a practice, will I see you coaching out there, too, or do you stay on the sideline? I'm just observing, young lady. Okay. <laughs> I stay out of the coach's way. <laughs> How long were you coaching? Well, I, I coached for, tw for 27 years. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I got paid for 20 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, I uh, coached at Athens for 20 years and served as the assistant athletic director for Athens City School for seven years. Wow. Yes. Look, now I'm going to put you on the spot because okay. you have a lot of coaching experience. So is that just with uh, football, right? Just football? Yes, football, yes. Um, someone who's watching right now, what advice would you give them who wants to be a football coach? Uh, love the kids. You know, keep it real. Uh, if you have to, go to their homes and see what it's all about. Mm. You know, I, 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 I did that. You know, I had to take kids home from practice, and I was able to go into their home and meet their parents and all that. But coaches got to learn to love the kid. 
regardless of their situation, their background. It's all about the kids, not about the coach. Yeah. Yeah, it's about, it's about the kids. That's really good. Yeah. Now, both of you, what have you seen differently in these kids coming up with the transfer portal, the NIL, all the different stuff? Do you, have you seen a change in the type of character of these kids? Or what, what have you guys seen? For me, um, a lot of them are entitled or mm. feel entitled. Mm -hmm. um, that work ethic isn't as good as it used to yes, be. Yes. You used to yeah. have, and, you know, back in the day when we were growing up in sports and stuff, we worked our butt off, right. you know, to, to improve yes. our, you know, skill set or whatnot. And now mm -hmm. these students, not, not all of them, but mm -hmm. some of them um, feel like certain things should just be handed to them yeah. and they yeah. shouldn't have to work for it. Yes, yes. And I, I emphasize to athletes, you know, do, be, do your best. You know, there's always someone out there that can take your place. Mm. I learned that as a running back coming out of Ads and all state running back and going out to Texas to play, it's some super athletes in Texas. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to meet guys that was, hey, were faster than me. Get, let me put it this way. They were more athletic than I was. Even though I was athletic, yeah. but these guys, was, they were super. And I had to, hey, work hard at it. Yeah. You know, my, my freshman year, uh, I, I uh, decided that I'm going to work out the practice. I'm going to work out the practice to better myself to be able to compete with the athletes that I met in Texas. Yeah, you know? that's, that's so incredible. So it, kids, get, back, back then, it was all about sacrifice. Kids, now they want you to give them stuff. Give them mm -hmm. this, you know, no one owe, no one owe you anything. Yeah. Keep that in. I tell you, no one owe you anything. If you want a piece of the pie, you got to work for it. Mm. It's out there. Do you want to be a part of the program? Yeah. You know, and I teach them to stay focused. Mm. You know, only 1% makes it in the NFL. Yeah. Get your degree. That's what's going to take you farther in life. Well, I know you some know. kids watching right now are probably really fired up about Tennessee Valley Prep and, yeah. and wanting to work, play, yes. learn yes. from you all. Yes. And we're going to be right back to hear from some of the coaching staff of Tennessee Valley Prep. Welcome back. I am here with the coaching staff of Tennessee Valley Prep Sports Academy. Now, Coach, I'm going to start with football. Will you tell us why Tennessee Valley Prep? Why Tennessee Valley Prep? That's an excellent question. Uh, Tennessee Valley Prep here, we are a player's first program. We pride ourselves in helping our guys find their why and their purpose in life. Um, our philosophy is very simple here. You come here, you can go anywhere. As you know, the same philosophy that's adopted by many colleges and universities. Now we're going to talk to, we have Coach Raglan and we have Coach Sherelle and Coach Tez. Um, with, let's start with you, Coach. Why Tennessee Valley Prep from the basketball perspective? Uh, well, Tennessee Valley Prep, um, I just wanted to be a part of a program where I can help kids. Coming up in the youth rankings, uh, I always had coaches to help me. So I felt like Tennessee Valley Prep was an opportunity for me to give back. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys tell us why Tennessee Valley Prep. Um, why Tennessee Valley Prep? I think if you give yourself an opportunity, create an opportunity for yourself. If you have a work ethic and you want to be great at something and you think that you can be a great basketball player or football player, Tennessee Valley Prep gives you that opportunity to grow and maximize your opportunities. Yeah. And Coach says, will you tell us, you have a little bit of history with prep school. Will you tell us why Tennessee Valley Prep from, for you? Uh, why Prep for me? Because I spent two years in prep school growing up and uh, – it helped me get my, my test scores right so I could uh, get to college and I was able to get the Auburn after my second year in prep school and accumulate a 14 year professional career after Auburn. So wow. uh, prep school really helped me get my, my, myself out there. And you recently retired, right? Yes, I just recently retired last year, and 
also had my jersey retired in Germany wow. this past season. Congratulations. I don't know if you guys heard of but. You. 14 years is very rare um, to stay with one team for that long. So that's a testament to not only you, but your work ethic, skill, and all the above. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. And I would love to hear from, from you guys. Now, will you talk more about just the philosophy of coaching? Why? What is the difference between coaching prep school versus college, high school? What's the difference? Um, well, coaching prep school you know, presents a lot of unique opportunities and challenges. Uh, first of all, with prep school, you're responsible for recruiting players in, like colleges, but helping players get recruited out, mm -hmm. like high schools. So uh, that's really, really, really important to me and important to us here at Tennessee Valley Prep that we help players get recruited out because um, that's ultimately their goal while they're here. With the change with transfer portal and the different things that are happening with college recruiting, prep schools can provide an avenue, an opportunity for guys to better their skill set, better the academics to prepare them to move on to the next level. Yeah. Basketball, do you guys have a different perspective of what's the difference between prep and college coaching? Um, for me, I'm coming from I'm, co I'm being a high school girls basketball coach into coaching boys. So I think the difference in my philosophy is, is just direction. When you're coaching boys, it's a little bit more of a, um, a physical game and they the, the approach of they are more athletic, but with girls, it's more of a technical side and you have to teach more. So I think when you have to combine both of those, it makes it the, my coach's philosophy is is outwork people. You know, yeah. and I think it works on both sides, girls and boys. If you have the mindset to be outwork people, then you'll be successful. That's so. That's my coaching philosophy. And coach, we got to brag about you a little bit. Will <sighs> you tell them where where you played and in, in your career as well? Because also, I think it's admirable. You don't see a lot of women who coach men. So, will you talk about a little bit about your career? Um, I played four years at Auburn University. I was um, four years started there, and I played two years in Iceland, Finland. And I was a head coach at Major Emerson High School for four years, um, from 2017 to 2021. And we were the state runner-up my last year. And um, so my playing career, also being in my coaching career, and being a player's wife, all those three facets, I think it helps me be a great coach because being a player's wife, you still have to help him prepare for scouts and get ready for the competition because I see the same games he sees. So I think me being a player, player's wife, and a coach helps me understand and be able to coach boys from a different perspective. Yeah, right. that's incredible. Now, Coach Allen, I'm going to come back to you. Um, when is the, the first game for football? First game for us will be August 18th. We'll be traveling to Hardyville, okay. uh, South Carolina, for a game. Outstanding program there that they're building. We're excited about the opportunity to go and have an opportunity to prove ourselves and play. And what can we expect? Because I'm, I'm coming, those who are watching and coming to the games, what can we expect to see from your players? Um, we're going to play a fast and physical up brand of football that kids enjoy nowadays. We're going to throw it around a little bit, but we're going to get out there. We're going to run the ball. We're going to be very physical on defense. And, and we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be great. Coach Riley, I'm going to ask you the same question. What can we expect to see from the premier team? Uh, with us, a little bit of everything. Um, I like to let my guys showcase their ability to do everything. I don't want to limit them to just being able to shoot or just being able to pass. I just think you have the opportunity to do everything. That way it helps with your recruiting process. So there's going to be a lot of high-flying action, uh, 94 feet of defense, and, and we're just going to get after it. I love it. I love it. Coach Sherrill, what about you guys with Elite? Um, I think with my, with my, um, my cultural loss is more so get the ball up as many shots. We, I want to give as many shots as possible. And if we get that many shots, that give us the opportunity to win. And we're going to defend. And I, I throw a lot of different defensive schemes out there. We might do half quarter, three quarter court defense, mm -hmm. press. But after every major miss, we're going to have some type of defensive positioning and principle that's in place to be successful. So I'm, I like hybrid players, players that can play multiple positions and that have the high basketball IQs. And those watching right now who are not interested in playing for you guys, how did they get in contact with you? How is there still an opportunity to play for Tennessee Valley Prep football or basketball? Well, football first, there's definitely an opportunity. Uh, please contact us on our website, uh, tvalleyprep.com. Uh, someone for our coaches staff would definitely be in contact. We're in a position now where we're recruiting all positions. Um, we're excited by our recruiting class coming in, but we're looking at a few more impact players to that class. Basketball, what about you guys? Um, I think that we, our recruitment, um, recruitment is wide open. We're looking for high caliber players who can play both ends of the floor and who want to be better. 
I think if you have you when you come to prep school, you already a little you have a you have you have to have the um, anticipation that you have to outwork people and you have to earn your opportunity. It's not going to be given to you. So I want those parents to come in and understand that. Coach Raglan, what about you? Um, you can. Our recruitment is definitely still open. Um, just go to the website, and uh, somebody will will reach back out to to you guys. Well, before we go, I would love for you guys to share with those watching. If there's any advice that you would give for someone that wants to be in your shoes, that wants to be a coach, um, what would you tell them? Anyone wants to go first? I would say um, study your craft and develop your own system. I think, like, you know, I came from being only a head coach before I've never been an assistant, and I had to learn on my own. And I think it's, it, has, it had its advantages and disadvantages, but I think the advantage was that I'm my own style. I created myself mm. that I didn't duplicate it from anyone else. So that makes it unique. So I would say say to yourself and what you believe the how you believe the game to be played and outwork people. Right. right. That. And from a football standpoint, um I would say, you know, you gotta be yourself. One thing about kids nowadays, they will definitely see through that. Mm -hmm. You gotta be authentically you. And uh, that's what my staff and I pride ourselves on being, as well as our brothers for our basketball coach and our Tennessee Valley family. We pride ourselves on being authentically ourselves and, and just being us. And then for any young coach who wants to get involved in this business, be yourself, man, and just learn and study as much as you can. Get you a mentor in this business, and then the sky can be the limit for you. Coach Ragland, Coach Tez? Um, create your own identity. Um, you know, you have to learn who you are right. in order to teach other guys the game. Mm -hmm. And once you create your own identity, uh, you'll, you'll have some success. Yeah, it's excited to get mm -hmm. in contact with you guys. Visit that website, and we'll be right back. Thank you. The greatest asset we have is our employees. I'm very excited to welcome you to our new corporate website. The National Space Club was founded as the National Rocket Club in 1957. In North Alabama, we are extremely blessed. True Tone will test your theory in everything, the good things and the bad things, in everything give him facts. Thank you all for your time. For those watching, you can scan that QR code to visit their website. If you like to get tickets, if you like to learn how you can donate, please visit their website. And if you're looking for the next opportunity to play at the next level, why not us? Reach out to us on our website and learn all about the great things that are happening here at Tennessee Valley Prep. Join us next time to see who's off the clock.